Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Earth's Medicine, the channel that introduces you to the healing wonders of Mother Earth with a Jamaican flavor. So in our last video, we featured this medicinal plant, which is one of two plants that is commonly referred to as water grass here in Jamaica. However, in this video, we're going to be profiling this plant, which is the other medicinal plant that is commonly referred to as water grass in Jamaica. So today we're going to be focusing on its medicinal properties and how it is used in traditional medicine in Jamaica and in other cultures around the world. And we're going to start right now. This plant is a species of water grass that was previously scientifically known as Comelina longicaulis. Today, the preferred scientific name is Comelina diffusor. It belongs to the Comelina CE plant family. And some of you may be more familiar with the other name, which is the dayflower family. And the genus is called Comelina. In English, the plant has several common names depending on the region in which it is found. For example, in Hawaii, they refer to it as Hono Hono grass. And in other countries, it is known as climbing dayflower, scurvy weed, creeping spiderwort, dayflower, wandering dew, and pond grass. But the preferred common name is spreading dayflower. The plant also has several common names in different languages. For instance, in Spanish, it is known as Canutillo Marado and Barquito Marayo. There are two recognized varieties. And I just want to remind you guys that when you go out and do your own research, it's very important that you use the scientific names because plants from different species can have the same common name. Water grass can be an annual or perennial plant, but it all depends on location. It can grow to about a meter in length and it tends to creep along the ground, but it can also grow upright. The stems are soft and weak. So Rocky is now pulling up the roots of the plant so that you can get to see what they look like. And they usually emerge at the leaf nodes. And the flowers are super tiny. I would say that they are about the size of an eraser that is on top of a pencil and they are a beautiful bright blue color but they can be lavender on rare occasions the flowers have three petals that look like mouse ears and they have wavy margins they open every morning and disappear within a few hours. Beneath the flowers is a folded leafy bract that could be about 1.5 inches long. The 
the leaves are of it, alternate and smooth along the margins. Water grass is distributed in many regions around the world. You can find it growing in the Caribbean, parts of the United States, Mexico, South and Central America, Africa, Asia, Australia, and the Pacific Islands. In Jamaica, you can find the plant growing wildly and organically in backyards, along roadsides, in forests, and in other green spaces. The plant prefers moist habitats and naturally occurs in shaded areas. However, when it is exposed to full sun, it tends to grow aggressively and the plant reproduces by seeds and cuttings. Based on research, the conclusion is that the plant has anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, antibacterial, antifungal, nephroprotective, hepatoprotective, cytotoxic, and central nervous system depressant activities. In the Malaysian Peninsula, they use the leaves to make a poultice and then they just apply this onto sores. In Indonesia, they crush the leaves and stems and use them for the treatment of irregular menstruation. In Africa, the Americas and some parts of Asia, the plant is used to treat things like urinary tract infections, respiratory tract infections, diarrhea, enteritis, which is basically inflammation of the intestines. And the plant is also used to treat hemorrhoids and eye problems like ophthalmia and conjunctivitis. In Ghana, they use the leaves to treat inflammation and for wound healing. And in China, the plant is used for swellings. Okay, so I'm taking a brief moment just to ask you guys to hit that like button right now if you're finding value in the video thus far and if you know anything about this plant and you would like to add it to the information please go ahead and drop a comment right now and please share the video as well so that others can benefit from this information today and if you're new here a very warm welcome to you if you would like to see more videos like this one in the future, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel right now. And please turn on your post notifications so that you will be alerted whenever we upload our next video. Thank you so much, guys. Now let's get right back to the video. The plant is also used to treat malaria, insect and bug bites, snake bites, 
rheumatoid arthritis, gonorrhea, influenza, fevers, laryngitis, sore throats, acute tonsillitis, otitis media, which is basically an inflammation or infection that is located in the middle ear. The plant is also used for nose bleeding, groin pain, dermatitis, leprosy, kidney disease, abscesses, boils, and edema. It is also used as a diuretic agent, blood coagulant, and a heart tonic. The leaves of the plant are rich in vitamin C and in Australia, early settlers consumed the plant to prevent scurvy, which is a disease that is caused by a vitamin C deficiency. Today, the leaves are cooked and eaten as a vegetable in some cultures and it is also used as animal food. There is a dye that is also extracted from the flowers and used for painting in China as well. There are dangers associated with the use of herbal remedies. If you would like to learn more about the latter, then please click on the link in the description below. Medical Disclaimer The information shared on Earth's medicine is for the purpose of enlightenment. It is not to be used as a substitute for pharmaceutical medicine. If you are feeling ill or you have any health concerns, Please speak to your doctor about same.